from the time we had to exit the church, serve on the curb, we were homeless. We were an organization that was homeless. When we finally got into the building, it was a challenge. It was kind of rushed to try to get everything. We were totally flooded. We had about six feet of water. Even through COVID and the winter time, you know, God provided for it and things just kept on going. My wife was in a Bible study that Lois Bennett was there, and Lois Bennett was talking about wanting to start a food pantry. And at first I was skeptical because we're a small church. We don't have a lot of people, we don't have a lot of space, and Lois was like, we can make it work. I got volunteers, we can make it work. You have an opportunity to stand up now and say, wait a minute, I can stand in the gap. We, that's what we do, we stand in the gap, and we're not about a transaction. We're about transformation. The opportunity opened up in Emanuel Church and we went in there and started operating and we had in, in basically what, what grew to be 600 square feet, but we started in one little room and we took over a couple more rooms. One of the things I think that was most amazing was watching what happened when COVID hit. Because like I say, our church is, is small. You know, the hallway was built. It was 1950s, small school model. And there's no way we could have done six foot, you know, social distancing in the hallway. Well, we set up tents out in front of the church and would take food out and would have people lined up, cars lined up outside and take the food and put it in the cars. I want you to understand the heart and take away something that's bigger than, oh, I sorted food today, all right? Or I bagged food today. We served under four big tents behind Somerset Medical Center. We had to set it all up from scratch and literally put um, 10 to 15 to 20,000 pounds of food at the curb every Tuesday and get it into people's cars safely. When fall came around, we were serving um, outside and we said we have to get inside for the winter. And we found nobody would rent to us. We felt like our guests, you know? We didn't have enough, we didn't have enough wherewithal. We weren't good enough to rent in some of these places. We found one place where we could rent on a month to month basis and um, we were in there for 11 months. Again, set up a new way to distribute. This is what's going out to a family of five and up. Wow, that's awesome. So it's about uh, probably 150 pounds. This is our box building area. So we're going to do this in the vegetable kitchen downstairs. This is where we're building boxes. So we take the box and, and we're going around the outside. I don't know how we're exactly we're going to set it up there, but we'll go around the outside and we'll build boxes based upon the size of the family. I started with uh, my wife asking me, hey, Richie, I'd really like you to come my Bible study wants to, uh, you know, needs help and volunteers. So of course I said, no, I can't do this, but I came. And when I came there, I was blown away how many people were working and doing stuff that at that point, I never left. At first, uh, there was some apprehension from the community because sometimes they were a little suspect on why we were giving them so much food uh, on a weekly basis because it was different from other pantries where it was maybe once a month or every two weeks. And also the language barrier with some of them. I kind of treat it like the same way, you know. I, I interact with them the same way. I don't like uh, try to make them feel uncomfortable or anything when I ask them specific questions or, or in translation. Um, I like them to feel welcome and, uh, and, and yeah, make it a nice experience for them. We begin here with the devastation that came into focus today after the remnants of Hurricane Ida unleashed raging floodwaters on us and powerful tornadoes across the area. We lost about 
$100,000 worth of food. We lost all of our refrigeration and freezer equipment. So that's probably another twenty-five dollars to $30,000 and every bit of supplies. We had live fish in the water. <laughs> we didn't know what else was in the water. People came with boots. It was definitely devastating. I mean, it wasn't, uh, it, was, it was rough. Um, but ultimately, I think the idea was having to at least part of that whole team, that whole family. We had emptied the building and we turned the keys back in the following week, yet from Friday to Tuesday, we figured out, we contacted every single one of our guests who all come by appointment, told them where we would be, found a location, and on Tuesday, we served 60 families on the, on, right after we had been flooded out. We traveled around to a couple little places on the side of the road, Vinder and uh, Rescue Squad, and then moved to Bridgewater. The need kept growing and growing and growing and therefore the requirements kept getting larger and larger and larger. Last year, we sent out $2.1 million worth of food and served 800 families from eight different counties, but we also needed a building. I think Lois had a vision, and this is really kind of going back to the way it was originally, that the, the clients would be allowed to come into the space and pick what they wanted. If I looked at the way it was, then I would pass. It had been vacant for some period of time. So not only was it rough, it was dirty and it was filthy, and it clearly had been unoccupied for some period of time. But we had to look beyond what it was as to what it could be. We signed a lease in February and we moved the end of June after doing $450,000 worth of renovations. Being a business professional and working in a corporate environment every day, we focus on you know, making our customers feel special. And that's one of the things that brought me into Feeding Hands because the empathy that we have with our guests. The Feeding Hands Food Pantry also has a strong business performance and all of the volunteers and the staff are dedicated to continuous improvement. And that probably explains the phenomenal growth of the organization. We are just resilient. We are determined. We've grown to the place where it's now more of a community versus just uh, a transaction. Thank you, the people, for helping everybody, including me and my family. And so, how deep percent Good job. Feeding Hands is a nonprofit organization, so we receive a lot of donations and grants to continue what we do to serve our guests. And so it's a constant cycle to be able to raise money so that we can provide all this food and serve our guests. Everything in the county shut down, but we didn't shut down because we knew people needed us. And when we're done at the end of the night, it, I can go home and, like, and I can actually say that, I, that we did something, you know, to help other people. Hey, that's one guy's playing Sick and Darren. I'll be here.
If you are a volunteer, thank you for everything you do. We couldn't do it without you. And if you're not a volunteer yet, sign up. We welcome all new volunteers and we would love to have you.